What if someone created a super powerful computer and in the right hands and in the wrong hands, you would be concerned. For example, if it were in the wrong hands with the push of a button, someone could access nuclear launch codes. With the push of a button, someone can steal money from banks across the world. With a push of a button, they can completely wipe out internet access for countries. Seems scary, right? But in the right hands, with the push of a button, someone creates medical medicines and devices that will save people's lives. With the push of a button, someone finds anti-hacking methods so people's money can stay secure. And with the push of a button, they not only secure nuclear launch codes, they find out the ways to make clean energy available for humanity. So if someone were to have this supercomputer, it would depend on how it's used. But does a supercomputer like this exist? Well, the answer to this question and to these questions are, there is a supercomputer that's being built that can do this. And in the right hands, we are safe. The computer, it's called quantum computing. And in this particular video, we're gonna learn more about quantum computing. Hi, I am Olympia LaPointe, host of Answers Unleashed, seen on AnswersUnleashed.com and the author of the Answers Unleashed book series. If you know anything about my background, you know that I helped launch 28 NASA space shuttle missions into space and wrote the award-winning book series that explains science and our decision-making for the future. In this particular video, I am going to show us quantum computing. It's a very simple video. And it shows us three things. Number one, it explains quantum computing. Number two, it talks about the advantages of the new supercomputing system. And number three, it gives you the ways in which the computing system works. This video is meant to be shared. This video is a fun video as well as a serious video, but it gives you information about the new quantum computing so you have information not only for yourself, but you will have information to share because quantum computing is here and we need to know how it's going to be used. All right, I hope you enjoyed this lecture and let's start. We're going to look at quantum computing. Hi, I am Olympia LaPointe. And in this particular lecture, I'm going to explain quantum computing. It's going to be an easy to understand lecture that will give you information on the new emerging technology that is in works as we speak. Quantum computing is one of the most sophisticated computing systems that the world has ever seen. And we're going to get into that in this particular lecture. It's a basic understanding of quantum computing. And in my third book, Answers Unleashed 2, The Science of Attracting What You Want, I talk about quantum computing in, in showing us how quantum entanglement works, as well as quantum deciding, which is the process I created to help people make effective decisions for the future. So in my third book, I talk about quantum computing and the process of how we can gain information through something called entanglement, quantum entanglement to be specific. All right, here we go. Now, what you see right here is what is called a quantum computer. Before we get into quantum computing, I'm going to describe this scenario for you. And imagine this story. This is going to help you understand the foundation of the new computing system before we start talking about it. Imagine there's two people, one person in New York and one person in Los Angeles. And let's say that they travel miles to a conference and they meet up at a conference 
and they say hi to one another. And in this connection, something happens where something peculiar happens, actually. Imagine these two people meet, they say hi, and some peculiar type of situation happens where through their connection, the wallets that are in their back pockets come out of their back pocket and is placed into the other person's back pocket. I know, let's let's repeat that. So these two people meet and through what we call a quantum entanglement, information from one person's back pocket is placed into the other and the wallet from the other person is placed into the other person's back pocket. Then these two individuals go their separate ways but their information is still entangled and they go far distances. Let's say one goes with the information in their back pocket. One person goes to Dubai, let's say, and the other person travels, let's say to Italy. Their information is still entangled in their back pockets. That entanglement, if you can imagine this story, is what happens in quantum physics when two particles collide. Quantum entanglement is when two particles collide. They share information and they take information with them from the other particle and they separate. And when they separate, it doesn't matter how far these particles travel, they still contain information from the other particle. That is called quantum entanglement, which was first introduced by Albert Einstein and is used within quantum computing. In this particular lecture, we're going to look at the quantum entanglement in the quantum computing. And if you look at that, that is just such a beautiful, beautiful photo. To give you background of this, we're going to look at a couple of things. We're going to look at what is quantum computing, the introduction to it. We're going to look at the advantages. We're going to look at the quantum mechanics and how quantum mechanics happens in nature. And we're going to look at the three basic operations of quantum computing. We're going to look at superposition. We're going to look at entanglement and we're going to look at decoherence. Before we start, let's break down how important this particular study of quantum computing is. Security is the main concern with quantum computing. Security in the impending age of quantum computers is what is sought after with this particular development. The group or country or company who is able to create the quantum computing machine and have it be reliable will have the keys to every single security mechanism that exists on the face of this planet. Now, the reason why there's a rush and a race to create a quantum computing machine is because whoever holds the key to how a quantum computing machine works also holds the key to security systems. Along with nuclear fusion ignition, technology quantum computing is poised to be one of the most important technologies of the 21st century. With global governments having collectively pledged more than $38 billion in public funds for quantum technologies and $2.1 billion of new private capital flowing to quantum companies in 2022 alone, quantum technologies, particularly quantum computers, are rapidly moving from the lab to the commercial marketplace. And I know what you may be asking. What is quantum computing? And here's the answer. Quantum computing is a multidisciplinary field and it comprises itself of computer science, physics, mathematics. And this is the mathematics that uses quantum mechanics to solve problems faster than classical computers. 
The field of quantum computing also includes hardware research, the metals that are used to keep information cool, the, the type of cooling systems that are needed to travel information fast. The application of this physics is the hardware research. And then the quantum computers are, are able to solve certain type of problems much faster than classical computers by taking advantage of what we call quantum physics. And we're gonna look at what that is. Now the advantage, the advantage of these quantum computers is that it is a million times faster than the classical computer. Like our PC, the PC that you use or the Mac that you use or your cell phone that you use, it can be a million times faster. So to break this down, what would take a computer a million years to solve, a quantum computing machine could solve it in probably in a few seconds. Now, it's important to note, there's no quantum computer that is on the market that's affordable for the average person. So it's not like quantum computing machines can be in anyone's hands. It's only certain research and development individuals that are building these machines and making it available for advanced research. Now the applications of the quantum computing machines will include future hologram video technology. Imagine talking with me three-dimensional in your, in your living room. In order to process millions and millions of data points with hologram behavior, there has to be quantum entanglement, which is a, uh, a a basis of quantum computing that that will allow you to create holograms for massive amounts of communication like we do with Zoom for example or Skype nuclear fusion ignition clean energy that is one of the applications the future applications of quantum computing new medical treatments and drug drug development methods to fight cancers or alzheimers advanced cyber security technology is another type of application, stronger national security, as well as advanced aerospace engineering for space travel. So this type of machine can unlock the door for emerging technologies that will literally change our world. Now, what is quantum physics and quantum mechanics? And this is a, just an easy breakdown. I'm gonna share this with us. Quantum mechanics is the math that's used to explain how particles move. That's all it is. Quantum mechanics is mathematics. And it shows how the dimension of the particle is and where it moves and what it collides with. That's the, that's the extent of the math, all, all put into one sentence. Quantum mechanics is a math that explains how the particles move. And at a subatomic level, there are equations that describe how particles transfer information through energy, through vibration, and through light. And we're going to look at that, and we're going to see how quantum mechanics and quantum physics happens in nature and how it happens in the universe. And I created this for us, and this is also available in my third book where I talk about quantum entanglement. Here's a picture of a tree, and I'm going to describe how quantum physics happens in nature. And how nature gives us information about energy. You see this tree here? You see how the tree has these rings inside of it? Well, the rings share information about the tree. As the tree ages, the trunk gets wider and wider and wider. And as it gets wider, it creates these rings. And the rings tell us how old the tree is, how much water it has received, when it has received certain type of sunlight or water in certain age uh, brackets of its growth. It tells us a lot of information from the rings. And rings are not just in a tree trunk. They're in every single piece of matter in this universe. And let me break this down. This is an atom and it's a picture that I drew and this is an atom, and it has what we call a nucleus, which is the center part, and then it has these rings, and on the ring, it is an electron. An electron travels on this particular 
ring and it gives uh, energy that can be combined and created with other pieces of matter. An atom can have several different rings and these rings are called shells or sometimes they're called orbits and on each one is an electron. The electron carries energy and the rings is where the electron travels. And this is the rings or the shells or the orbits. So each one of the elements on the periodic table has this unique structure with the rings and the energy. Every single thing in our universe is built up of the atomic mass and this ring structure. Let me give us some examples so you see. This picture is a picture of Earth. And on the outside of Earth, or on the exterior, are these rings. One is the ozone layer, and these are these layers that are on the Earth's surface to protect the Earth from ultraviolet rays. This is this is actually a bird's eye view. Actually, it's higher than a bird's eye view. A bird doesn't get that high, but it's a view of the Earth and its rings. Now, the rings are just not on the outside of the Earth. If you look inside of the Earth, guess what happens? There's rings, and this is an illustration. We have rings. We have a core, which is of liquid iron. We have a mantle, and we also have a crust. Inside Earth is a set of rings. Now, it's not just Earth that this happens with. This is Saturn. The rings on the outside of Saturn give information about the planet and what it's gone through and what has possibly collided into it. The rings are seen in large bodies as well, not just atoms, but planets, and not only planets, solar systems. If we consider this particular view, this is our solar system. And if we consider our sun as being the nucleus, each one of the planets has an orbit that goes around the sun and they travel on their own orbit, otherwise known as its own ring. These rings form our solar system and each planet has a unique set of instructions that tells about our particular solar system. Every single planet, now note this is not drawn to scale because Saturn is far bigger than Earth, but this is a, this is a photo, this illustration. The point is that our solar system also follows these, this ring structure. And guess what else follows a ring structure? Light. The light that comes from your computer screen, the light that comes from the light bulb, the light that comes from a TV monitor, the light from a for, for just basic light, the sunlight, they also have rings. It's a form of energy. And the energy has what we call different particles. Quantum physics says that rings in light move particles, and these particles are called photons. When particles collide, they exchange information. So remember the two people that we saw at the beginning of the talk where their wallets somehow came out and put into the other person's back pocket where they exchange information? Well, quantum entanglement, says that when particles collide, they exchange information. And this includes particles of light. If multiple particles touch, you exchange information nearly at the speed of light. So the trick is to have information collide as much as possible so information can be exchanged through light particles, which then are translated into information. That is quantum entanglement that Albert Einstein explained. Now we're going to see how this applies to 
quantum computing. Remember the rings that we were talking about? Well, each particle, which is a type of a ball, will have rings around it. And information on a light particle can be held within what we call a type of qubit. So in quantum computing, you have something called a qubit. It's a basic unit of quantum information. Now, what a qubit is, is just a sphere, and a sphere is a three-dimensional ball. In mathematics, a sphere is a three-dimensional ball. Imagine a beach ball, for example. And if you were to look at the surface of a beach ball or how big the beach ball would be, the mathematics would give you the dimensions of the ball. So if you can imagine this, here is an outside ring. This is the perimeter of the beach ball, let's say. And the mathematics shows you at what angle or what location would information be on this ball. So in quantum computing, quantum bits or qubits are represented by quantum particles. These are the particles that exchange information. The math that represents information is stored and is moving along a sphere. So this ball here, imagine like a beach ball, it's somewhere on this particular ball. When you manipulate the bits, you can process information. So when you move the qubits to different places and they collide, you can exchange information quickly. The quantum processor does all the work by processing the qubits. Let's go into this a little bit more. So now let's talk about classical bits versus qubits. In a classical situation with our regular computers, we have a classical bit, and that's how computers process information. It can be zero or one, where zero represents off and one represents on. So we can either have two states in a classical computer, either you're going to succeed or you're going to fail. That's how a classical computer works. However, a quantum computer looks at multiple states at once. For example, a qubit, a quantum bit, what it does is it creates a ball and on the ball is rings and on the ring is multiple sets of information. It can be on and off at the same time and there can be other scenarios that exist at the same time and place, that information is placed on the ring. And there's several different rings that exist along the exterior of this sphere. And the spheres are different size. So in quantum mechanics, it is based on a circle, which represents how energy moves in the universe. You can place data on parts of the circle. And as a result, it can be placed in what we call a superposition of states. Now that gets us into the three key principles of how quantum computers operate. So let's look at what that is. Superposition. This is an example of a superposition where you have multiple quantum states that are being added together. And let's look at what that means. There's a math of how this works. When you add two quantum curves together, you will get another quantum curve. So if you add one curve together to another curve, your result is still a quantum curve. Superposition states that much like waves in classical physics, you can add two or more quantum curves together, two quantum states specifically, and the result will be an another quantum state. Everything in life has energy, everything. And if you can look at energy as a wave, that's called a quantum state. When we add two waves together, it still gives you energy, which is another quantum state. If you were to take this particular wave and wrap it around a ball, this is how you get the ring. 
So the ring, when you spread it out, is a quantum curve. So the superposition says that you can represent every quantum state as a sum or two of more distinct states. This is superposition of qubits. It gives you the ability to have what we call parallel, parallelism, allowing you to process millions of operations at the same time for you to get an answer that will work. So if you can imagine superposition of states is that all of these particular locations can add together to give you one final result and they're all being processed at the same time. And that gives you the ability to have operations move at a very fast speed. Now, how does quantum entanglement work? Quantum entanglement occurs when two particles collide and they separate, and it doesn't matter how far they've traveled, they still contain the information of when they collided. Quantum entanglement occurs when two particles collide and exchange information and mimic that information no matter how far each one of the particles or the data has traveled. For example, you can use this particular theory for if you gain information and find an answer here on Earth, you can travel the data very far, let's say to the moon or to Mars. That transfer of data at such a quick rate is how quantum entanglement is used. If you can determine one qubit of how it spins and it's collided with another type of qubit, then you can look at the other qubit to figure out what's happening with a qubit that can be millions of miles away or vice versa. This is how quantum entanglement allows quantum computers to solve problems at a very fast weight independent of time and space. That was entanglement. And the reason why entanglement is so powerful is that it can solve complex problems extremely fast because of the information that it exchanges. And how it works is this. There's one light particle that collides with a second light particle. When they collide and then they separate, the first particle not only has its own information, but it also takes the information from the other particle. And the same happens with the second particle. When they collide, it not only contains its own information, it separates and contains the other particle's information as well. That is entanglement. And the entanglement then leads us to the third process and third operation of quantum computers, which is called decoherence. I have this picture of a lawnmower here to help us understand noise. Let's say that you were wanting to read your favorite book and you heard on the outside a lawnmower, a very noisy lawnmower, running, running and running and running and running and running and you were trying to read your book. And as you're trying to read your book, everything is going in your eyes and it's not being captured in your brain. The noise of this lawnmower is so loud, you can't hear. You can't hear your own thoughts. But I want to point out something to you if you look at this picture. Look at the man to the left. What does he have on? He has on... He has on earphones to muffle out the noise. Decoherence in quantum computing is filtering out the noise. Decoherence is a loss of communication over time due to outside energy influences called noise. Coherence is basically how long it takes for a quantum state to live or how long it takes to supply information from one place to another. Decoherence is when that communication breaks down. 
So when you have a message in an energy curve and it interacts with outside energy, it changes the communication chain. The in message can be garbled over time. Let's let's look at that. Looks. Let's say you're trying to read in a book and then that lawnmower is outside making a lot of noise. Over time, the information that you're trying to read becomes jumbled in your head. That is a real life example of decoherence that happens with how your brain, which is a gigantic computing machine, processes information. So if you can remove the noise, you can receive accurate communication. Decoherence in the quantum world represents environmental factors like radiation, outside heat, excessive noise, vibrations that can cause the quantum state of the qubits to collapse, meaning it doesn't transfer the information correctly. So decoherence is the loss of a quantum state in a qubit. A large engineering challenge is constructing a quantum computer that prevents noise from interfering with the data output. So you see this happening. You see an exterior shell being created on the outside of a quantum computing machine. This external shell helps reduce radiation, outside heat, outside noise, vibrations, any type of energy that could destroy the communication in the system. So a large engineering challenge is constructing a quantum computer and a way for it to be shielded from this excess noise with the correct cooling, the correct models, and the correct type of insulation for the communication to happen accurately. For more information, visit AnswersUnleashed.com slash quantum deciding. You'll find that information from my latest book, Answers Unleashed and the Six Decisions to Make for the Best Future of Technology. And I'm going to post this particular video on my website, AnswersUnleashed.com. I am Olympia LaPointe and I hope you have enjoyed this presentation. So you have it, now you know. There is such thing called a quantum computing machine that is going to be a super fast computer. And the people who will be able to develop the super fast computer and have it operational will hold the keys to computing for the world. With this new technology, we can do great things. And with emerging technology of quantum computing, we can not only understand how it's being used, but apply it in effective ways, whether it be clean energy, data security, healthcare, medicine. We have the ability to use this emerging technology of quantum computing in a fabulous way. Now that you know about quantum computing, share this video with a friend. I am Olympia LaPointe, host of Answers Unleashed, seen on AnswersUnleashed.com, and share this video, and I'll see you next time.